Hi everybody, this is SCK4110 coming to you. It's been a while since I made a video. I just moved from Massachusetts to Florida and I'm just about settled in. And boy, do I have a video for you today. You see friends, the Jewish Kabbalists firmly believe that they have the power to create reality or, reality or realities. Now you might be thinking that that sounds pretty harmless, but is it? Once you see the clips I have lined up for you in this video, you may be shocked. You may not believe your ears. And I assure you that the majority of you have not heard or seen anything like this before. Now this series is not, <laughs> I repeat, not about traditional Jews, those who are of the tribe of Judah. This video is in regard to those who take Kabbalah, the Zohar, the Talmud, in occult mysticism or ancient mystery teachings very, very seriously, okay? Now Kabbalah is mystical teachings and instruction in black magic, whose primary text is called the Zohar. Now I just want to define a few things here before we before we get to the clips, okay? Now the Kabbalistic approach utilizes black magic via such thing as meditation, tantric sex, numerology, and or math mathematics to find hidden meanings behind the Hebrew that is in the first five books of the Bible and the Talmud. The Talmud being the book which contains the Talmudic laws, customs, ceremonies observed, as well as commentary on the Torah, okay? Now using mathematical combinations of Hebrew letters, meditation, and what they refer to as prayer, they have, or they believe that they have, unlocked the mysteries of creation itself. But these are shh, secrets. Secrets judged to be too privileged for the masses. The masses, of course, being the non Jew. Now one of the things that Kabbalistic Jews are not allowed to do, okay, is to reveal their Kabbalistic secret teachings. And I will go as to, and I will go as far as to call them dirty little secrets. However, I found a woman, well actually a friend of mine sent me this video, who took it upon herself to do just that. As per her YouTube channel, her name is Doreen Dotan and her YouTube name is Silver Red Indigo. She is Jewish and she is a Kabbalist. Let's listen to her regarding the prohibition regarding revealing Kabbalistic secrets. Well, let's take a look at the first clip. This is beyond doubt the most serious video I've ever undertaken to make and um, I really agonized um, whether or not to make it at all, whether or not you would understand, um, and you probably won't, and whether or not um, I would incur, incur um, punishment for making the video, because one of the things that we're not supposed to do is reveal secrets of the Kabbalah. And if I don't tell you what I, I need to tell you, There's every chance that this world could die. And so I'm going to tell you a secret that's never been told before. Outside of very, very, very close circles. Now, don't fall for the crocodile tears, friends. And you'll see why I say this as we proceed. For those of you who are still under the delusion that Kabbalistic Jews are God's chosen, do I have some surprises for you today. Now, I just want to tell you, I just want to say that I am not judging this woman. There is only one judge, and it's not me. But rather, what I am doing is exposing the sinister, secret teachings of Jewish Kabbalah. Now, before I show you what she decided to reveal, I want you to fully understand where she is coming from, so to speak, by showing you her opinion on the Word of God, the Bible. Now, besides considering the Word of God, and I quote, to be long-winded, 
Imagine calling the word of God. Imagine calling God's word long-winded. She has a few choice words to describe the Bible. Let's take a look at the next clip. I found a very good uh, video on uh, YouTube today. It's called uh, Jesus the Misunderstood Jew. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's made by an American rabbi. Uh, the only point that I differ with him on is that he accepts uh, that which is written in the Christian Bible as though it were all accurate representations of what Yeshu said. I don't agree with that. I think it's a very crafty melange of uh, truth, half-truth, lies and damn lies. You see, according to Kabbalah, the non-Jews or Gentiles were not, get this, not created by God. You heard me right, they were not created by God, but rather were created by, and I quote, the Elohim. Let's take a look at the next clip. And I'm going to be talking about creation of humanity in this video. That's what this video is, is, is all about. I've been getting a lot of messages and seeing a lot of videos about Gentiles trying to understand who the Elohim are. I'm not going to pronounce that name uh, as it's correctly pronounced because um, when you throw that name around kind of, you know, willy-nilly, um, all you manage to do is, is kind of look presumptuous to us and a bit silly and it embarrasses us that you're aping us. But when we start to use holy names, things actually happen um, and uh, we only use those names when we pray. So I'm going to say here in Elohim. Um, and people are asking whether or not the Elohim uh, created them. And the answer is yes. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> um, but they're not aliens that came from another dimension or another planet. I'm going to tell you who the Elohim really are. Miss Doreen completely denies the truths regarding creation written in the Old Testament. Her information comes directly from the secret ancient mystery schools right out of Babylon, friends. Let's take a look at the next clip. Um, so, people are trying to grasp, grapple with, with, with what it is about feeling that you're not quite real, that you're somehow being created, and people come out with all kinds of ideas. Well, maybe we're robots, maybe we're um, being created by supercomputers on another uh, planet by another culture that's uh, far more advanced than ours. Um, all kinds of different ideas which tells me that people are asking questions about um, their own reality and how they're actually being created and they're beginning to ask questions in the forms in which the Kabbalah answers. Now before she lowers the Kabbalistic creation boom, before she tells you the big secret, she talks about why Jews call non-Jews goys and what, according to them, Kabbalah really is. If you're not sitting down, you might want to. Let's take a look at the next clip. Um, I want to talk about what it is to be a goy what that really means, uh, why the Talmud uses the terms that it does, what those terms really means. Mm. What is the Kabbalah? You've heard that the Kabbalah means the receiving, which is true. Uh, that's what it means, but that's a euphemism. Uh, what the Kabbalah actually is, is God and his wife, Israel, having sex. 
That's what the Kabbalah really is. My husband looked at me. He goes, I can't like, I, I can't believe she said that. But I'm telling him, yeah, I mean, you should have seen his face. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. And um, when God and his wife, Israel, have sex, the result of that is a birth. Worlds are born out of that union communion and those worlds are inhabited by living beings all kinds of living beings among them you the Gentiles you are our creation you've heard that the Elohim created man that is absolutely correct, except that it's not just in the past, it's a continuous present. And I'm going to tell you who the Elohim are. My husband is looking at me out of this, like, oh, like oh, that's, I'm just going, I don't believe she's saying this, but it has to be said, because the alternative are the chemtrails and the FEMA camps and uh, the, the Morgellons and all of the other horrors that uh, the imagination um, is now conjuring up. And uh, the alternative to telling you this truth is, is far worse than not telling you. Um, the Talmud calls you Goy. The Talmud refers to you as Chaya which you think means animal, or even worse, cattle. Um, you think that goy is a derogatory term. Um, none of that is the case. Uh, the name Chava, which you pr mispronounce as Eve, in fact, all of your languages are mis mispronounced Hebrew, all of them. Um, the name Chava is numerically equal to the word Goy. In Hebrew, the fact that words are numerically equal are extremely important. It means that there are two aspects of one mega concept. They come out as different phenomena, but at root, they are one and the same thing. So, Eve and Goy is the same thing. And another one of the words that equals 19, which is the numerical value of Chava and Goy, is the word Hoge, which means to meditate and to pronounce, like the kinds of pronunciations that we make when we pray. Um, you have been told that we think of you as being somehow uh, subhuman. That is a misunderstanding. The reality of the situation is you are human. We are something else. Yeah, she's something else, all right, don't you think? So we learned here that Kab Jewish Kabbalists hold the teaching that Jews are involved in a sexual relation with God. And according to Ms. Doreen, this sexual relationship begins at 12 for girls and 13 for Jewish boys. What you're going to learn in the next clip is that they believe that God created them, the Jews, or Israel, and that they, the Jews, literally created non-Jews. You might be thinking, no, nah, they don't really think this. Well, let's take a listen to one, to Miss Doreen as she reveals the Kabbalistic secret teaching. Again, friends, secrets that are never to be revealed to the non-Jew. Let's take a look at the clip. Well, let's take a listen to one to Miss Doreen as she reveals the Kabbalistic secret teaching. Again, friends, secrets that are never to be revealed to the non-Jew. Let's take a look at the clip. 
We are not aliens, but we are the children of the Most High. You are not. You are our children. You are the children of Elohim. I am sorry to have to tell this to you, but it is the absolute truth, and you're going to have to face this reality. What's called an Oshut, which is humanity, is not the same thing as Adam, which is usually translated as man, but is not man. And I'll show you from the, the sources that Adam is, the, is Elohim. That's us. You are the Enoshut. So it's not that you're subhuman. It's that we are above human. We are your creators. The thought is going to go through your mind. Well, if you think you're our creators and you think that you can destroy us, and my answer to you is I know that we are your creators. And I also know that being your creators does not mean that we have every right to be your destroyers. It doesn't work that way. So there you have it. <laughs> we are human, but they are above human. But it goes deeper, even deeper than this. Would she dare suggest that Jews and non-Jews are not even of the same species? Well, let's find out in the next clip. And then it goes on to say, Nevertheless, you will die like men, and fall like one of the ministers. That is to say, even though we are above the level of human, we are still mortal. Most of the levels of reality that you're accustomed to seeing is if something is of a different species, it has a different form. Humans and Adam and prophets all have the same physical form. So you think that they're one and the same species. They are not. Jews and Gentiles are not the same species. We are not the same order of existence. We look alike. And the reason why we look alike is because you're being created in our image. But we are not one and the same. So according to Kabbalah, they created and continue to create non-Jews. And we are not created in, in non-Jews, are not created in God's image, but rather their image. Hence the term Goy friend and just when you think and just when you think what she is spewing out of her mouth couldn't get any worse it does and not only according to these teachings are we created by them they believe they are the, the Elohim and they are our creators we are created in their image according to these Babylonian teachings we do not worship our father Christians non-Jews and the like do not worship our father the creator of the universe the god of the bible no we worship planets let's take a look at the next clip we are adam and we are the elohim the gentiles on the other hand is what is called chava and that is why the talmud says you are called Adam, and the worshippers of the planets are not called Adam. That means the Gentiles. And then the Gentile says, well, I don't worship the planets. In fact, you do. And you are very much worshippers of your own minds. You are lost in your thoughts. Your thoughts control you. And that is why we call you idol worshippers. That is why we call you people who worship planets. Because you're enthralled by your own brilliance. So there you have it. According to these chosen ones, and of course I'm mocking here when I say this, Christians don't worship the Father, the creator of all things. No, we worship 
planet. And getting back to the lie from the pit of hell that they, the, the, the self-appointed Elohim, created non-Jews, how, according to the Babylonian teachings, do they do this? Well, let's get it straight from the horse's mouth in the next clip. We create you through the medium of our language of Hebrew. That is how you are created. When we pronounce Hebrew, the forms that go off from those pronunciations create the worlds. You have been taught that King David, excuse me, uh, Shlomo, is, is King Solomon, David's son, said that uh, all the world is vanity. This is the way you have been uh, taught it actually goes. Uh, no. What King Shlomo said, Hevel. Hevel does not mean vanity. Hevel is the vapor that is emitted from the mouth when we speak. Well, you can see that when it gets, um, when it gets cold. When we speak in Hebrew, the hevel, the vapor that is emitted from our souls, from our, our ruach, our spirit, come out in the forms of the Hebrew letters, and those combine to create living beings, meaning you. If you were to speak Hebrew, that would not happen. You know, I wish I could tell you this is just one crazy lady friends, but this is simply not the case. This is what they believe and this is what they teach. This is blasphemy beyond belief. In the next clip, let's take a look at their view on Christianity. Um, there is no such thing as Christianity. Um, I'm going to be reading some quotes from uh, Real Torah <laughs> and uh, some quotes from um, what you call the Bible. Uh, there is no New Testament. As one of my rabbis once said, that which is testament is not new, and that which is new is not testament. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to have a little bit of a sense of humor about this because you make such silly mistakes that, you know, for 2,000 years, We've been like biting our tongue and holding it in and trying to keep a straight face when you like come and, 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 and how do you call it, testify to us. For 2,000 years, friends, these people have denied Christ and, continu and continue to deny Christ. And 1 John, what does 1 John chapter 2 verse 22 say? And who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. She is a liar and has the spirit of antichrist. Let's take a look at the next clip. There are passages in uh, your Bible that are clearly uh, things that uh, Yeshu might have said, would have said, because we know that these are real Jewish teachings. Um, some of them are like a little bit distorted, but we can see uh, what uh, the, the, the original source must have been. Uh, some of them are uh, obviously either misinter misinterpretations of things that he said or out and out lies. Basically, it breaks down into truth, half truth, lies, and damn lies. Uh, your Bible there. The issue was quoted as saying, I was not set, sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Again, full stop. You're intellectually dishonest if, if, if you continue after being told that. Um, it's not the case where, yeah, he came to the Jews, but the Jews rejected him, uh, so uh, he came to us kind of by default. He never did come to you. And it's, you know, you're talking about like, uh, you know, like you go into a bar and you see this this gorgeous brunette, 
and you try to like uh, cuddle up to brunette and she's not interested in, in you um, she rejects you and you're feeling kind of down so like when the buxom blonde walks in you know like um, she's like a little bit cheaper but uh, you know you'll take her because the one that you really wanted wouldn't have you it's not like that it's not like uh, if the Mashiach, if he had been the Mashiach and he was sent to us and we rejected him, it's not like he would like find comfort uh, with, with the buxom blondes among the Gentile peoples. It just doesn't work that way. Okay? It's a question of uh, a fortiori. You know, if the Jews weren't going to accept him, if he was what you claim that he was, which he is not, uh, but if he was, uh, certainly the Gentiles would not have been fitting to do so. So we have a matter of a fortiori. To think that he went running to you for comfort when we rejected him is absolute nonsense. Okay. And then there's some kind of, this is, this is the funniest bit of all, uh, there's some kind of thing where Paul rebukes Peter at Antioch. Um, it, it seems that, that, that uh, but Peter was come to Antioch, was come to Antioch. I withstood him to the face, and I blamed him because he did eat with the Gentiles. And um, the reason why they claim that he shouldn't have uh, been eating with the Gentiles is because they're not circumcised. Now that's an interesting window into uh, the intentions of the pagan who wrote this. <laughs> kind of a dead giveaway, but um, it has nothing to do with Jewish law, and whoever wrote this, not only is this not the inspired word of God, um, this is pagan trash. The Bible, the New Testament is pagan trash? You know, friends, the term, <laughs> are you hearing this? The term, friends, Judeo-Christian is an oxymoron. There's no wonder, at least in my mind, why Jesus rebuked these people as he did, telling them that they are of their father, the devil. At the time Jesus was on the earth, these people were arrogant, boastful, exclusive, self-centered, corrupt, prideful, and yes, believed they were superior to all other peoples. Has anything changed in the past 2,000 years? Well, I'll let you decide that for yourself. I already have. Well, I hope this has been an eye-opener for you, and I hope it's given you something to think about. That's all for now. Take care, and God bless. Yeah.